Hello everyone! In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make this clock that runs in a browser using Python. It's a great project for beginners, so let's get started. I'm using my usual skeleton files, including an HTML file called index.html, a Python file called app.py, and a CSS file called app.css. In the index.html file, I add two lines in the header to set up the environment to run Python. Python is a library that lets you use Python syntax instead of JavaScript. The first line is the main Python library, and the second lets you use standard Python modules. I also link the app.css file to the HTML document. In the HTML body, the Python function is called onload, and there's a div with an ID called container. Finally, there is a script that imports from the app.py file. I have another video on Python with more details if you're interested. In the linked app.css file, I set the text align property to center to center the content in the body. In the app.py file, I import document, timer, and HTML from Python's browser module. I also import the datetime module from Python's standard libraries. Last, I import the pi, cosine, and sine functions from the math module. These are all the dependencies we will need for this project. I'm going to define a simple class called clock. If you're not familiar with class in Python, think of it as a template for creating objects that contains a collection of attributes and methods. In our clock class, the first method we are going to create is the init method. It will initiate any data or behavior when we first create an object. The arguments for the init method are self, which represents the class itself, parent ID, which is the ID of the parent node in the HTML document, canvas size. I'm going to create a canvas for each clock object, proportion, which is the size of the clock proportional to the canvas size, circle width, which is the thickness of the stroke of the circle. Line color, the color of the circle and tick marks. Face color, the color of the clock face. Font color, the color of the text. Font style, the size and font family of text. Tick length and tick width, the length and width of tick marks. Lastly, H color, M color, and S color. They are the colors of the hour hand, the minute hand, and the second hand, respectively. With these parameters, we will have fine control over how the clocks look like. I first create a canvas element using html.canvas, and pass the canvas size for both width and height. This will create a square-shaped canvas. I save it as a class attribute self.canvas. I will be able to access this attribute in other methods within the class. Then I select the HTML element with the parent ID and add the canvas to that element. To draw on the canvas, we need the rendering context. In this case, it's self.canvas.getContext2D. I assign it to self.ctx. Self.x, self.y are the coordinates of the origin of the circle. I want the circle to be centered on the canvas, so I set both values to be canvas size divided by 2. Self.radius is calculated using proportion times canvas size. I assign the rest of the parameters as class attributes. In the end of the init method, I call the self.drawFace method which will draw the clock face. I use timer.setInterval to call the self.drawHand method repeatedly every 100 milliseconds, so the hands will be pointing at different numbers depending on the time of day. I add placeholders for the drawFace and drawHand methods because they are called in the init method but have not been implemented yet. I instantiate a clock object and provide the necessary parameters. I set parent ID to container, canvas size 600, proportion 0 0.3, circle width 15, font color black, font style 20 pixels Arial, line color orange, face color ivory, tick length 15, tick width 1, 
H color black, M color black, and S color red. Although I just created a clock object, it won't show up on the canvas because I haven't implemented the two methods necessary. So I'm going to implement the draw face method next. I use self.ctx.beginPath to start a new path for the drawing. To draw a circle on the canvas, I call ctx.arc method. It takes five arguments. The first two are the x, y coordinates of the origin. The third is the radius. The last two arguments are the start and end angles of the arc and radiant. Since it's a full circle, the angle goes from 0 to 2 pi. I set the stroke color using ctx.stroke style, fill color using ctx.fill style, and the thickness of the circle using cts.line width. Then I call ctx.fill and ctx.stroke to fill in the color and stroke the lines. Last, I close the path using ctx.close path. I save the file and start a local server using the live server extension in VS Code. We can see now we have a circle with orange lines, stroke, and ivory field. Next, I will draw the tick marks and text on the clock face. There are a total of 60 tick marks. Every fifth of the tick marks is slightly longer and thicker than the rest of them. So I start by setting up a for loop for i in range 0 to 60. The angle between the first tick mark and the i-th tick mark is i times 2 pi divided by 60. We now consider the situation that i is not divisible by 5. The starting location of the i-th tick mark is x plus radius times sine angle and y minus radius times cosine angle. I use ctx.move2 to move to the starting location. Then I call ctx.line2 to draw a line to the end location. The distance from the start to end location is self.tick length. Therefore, you can replace the self.radius in the starting location by self.radius minus self.tick length. I set the other line properties and close the path. Now all the shorter tick marks are displayed on the canvas correctly. Back to our code. I will draw the longer tick marks when i is divisible by 5. The code is the same as the shorter ones, except they have a longer tick length and a thicker line width. I will multiply the self.tick length by 1.5 to make them longer and make the line width twice as thick. The tick marks now are complete. Next, I'm going to add the text. Because the texts are located next to the end point of the longer tick marks, we can just add a few lines of code under the same else statement. I set the display text to be i divided by 5, and set the font style and font colors. To add text, I use self.ctx.fillText. I copy the end coordinates of the long tick marks. But I want the text to be further towards the center, so I multiply the self.tick length by 2.5. I check the drawing in the browser again, and I'd like to replace the 0 with number 12. Also, the text should move a little towards the left and the bottom. Here you need to do a little experiment until you find the best position. I add a minus 6 to the x and plus 6 to the y. And now the text's position looks better. Next, I'll implement the draw hands method. I get the current time using datetime.datetime.now. Then, using .hour, .minute, and .second attributes, I can get the hour, minute, and second as integer values. With these values, we can compute the angles for the three hands at the current time and assign them as S angle, M angle, and H angle. To draw the second hand, I move to the origin and draw a line at the S angle. To make the hand shorter, I multiply by a factor of 0 0.9. Then I set up the stroke style and line width, stroke and close the path. When I check the drawing, we can see the hand is indeed moving, but each second there's a new hand appearing with the previous drawing still on the canvas. To correct this, 
we can save the static image data as a class attribute at the end of the draw face method, and use self.ctx.putImage data at the beginning of the draw hands method. This way, each time the draw hands method is called, it starts with a blank clock face. Now that the second hand is drawn correctly, we can copy the code and modify accordingly for the minute hand and the hour hand. I change the angle, line width, and make the hour hand shorter by multiplying a factor of 0.7. I also change the color of the hour hand and the minute hand. And now finally, we have a working clock. Because we made the clock into a class, we can easily create more clock objects. Here I instantiate two more clocks with different parameters. We can see that there are two more clocks in the HTML file. It's that easy. I hope you learned something new. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button. If you want to see more future tutorials, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching and see you next time.